morning. In today's episode of Life After Planting, our family's getting ready to board the jet plane at midday to head to Florida, although I've been trying to convince them that maybe we should go to Arizona this year, really change things up. No, I'm just kidding. In all seriousness, I did sleep in a little bit this morning. It was magnificent. On to our frost damage segment of the video. It's been about four or five days since we got that freeze early in the morning. The beans, although they've seen their better days, are really unfazed by the frost. They're gonna be fine. Some of them definitely aren't happy about the cold weather. They'll power through it. You see, if I would've just put them a half an inch in the ground deeper, they wouldn't have been up before the frost. Should have been a little smarter. Our corn seedlings definitely got kicked in the nuts by the frost. They are extremely resilient. You can see all that green tissue starting to make its way up from the bottom, and some of them didn't even completely die. It's gonna be nice and warm today in the next few days, so you probably won't even be able to tell that there was a frost here before too long. Unless, of course, there's another frost. There's not really in the cards, but you never know what Mother Nature is gonna do. I'm a little conflicted to report that it actually did not rain at all last night. They were calling for a half inch to three quarters of an inch at one point in time. They backed it all the way down to a couple tenths, and at the end of the day, we got nothing. I'm happy because there's a lot of farmers with a lot to get done still. I hate to get them rained out. At the same time, I like a rain to activate some of our residual herbicide products, as well as hide any kind of sins we committed from planting. We do on occasion plant conditions that are less than ideal. In my opinion, the first tillage pass is your field cultivator, the second tillage pass is your planter, and the third tillage pass is a nice, easy half inch rain. That is the trifecta for a perfect stand with a little bit of warm weather thrown in the mix. A lot of neighbors are running hard in the area, working ground, spraying, planting. There's gonna be not very much left to plant by the time the next rain comes around, which is a good thing. I just stopped up at the retailer we work with, Helena. They said that they're pretty much on coast mode now because they've knocked out so many acres from the good conditions, along with farmers just really putting the hammer down anymore, planting corn and soybeans so fast out of the gate that they're able to just get a lot done. They're not really working incredible hours at this point. You know, They're not going three to 10 o'clock anymore, taking a little bit easier. They don't need to do very much to get everything done with four sprayers now. I've mentioned that we're done planting, and technically we are. Dad and I are gonna knock out one little patch that we haven't forgotten about. It's not a very productive piece by any means, and it's really more hassle than it's worth, but the principle stands, especially for Dad. No acre that is possible for planting goes unworked and planted. With Father's Day right around the corner, I'm happy to have teamed up with Ridge to promote the Ridge Wallet and their key case. The Ridge Wallet is designed to be a modern take on the traditional wallet. It's streamlined, not bulky, designed to hold both cash and cards. It is also composed with RFID blocking material to keep your sensitive information safe. My once girlfriend, now wife, actually bought me a Ridge Wallet almost 10 years ago and I got my money's worth out of it and was not disappointed one bit. I've since upgraded to this new Stonewash Titanium wallet. If there's any time to buy yourself or a loved one a Ridge wallet or a key case, it's right now because if you follow the link to ridge.com forward slash a trippy farmer, you can get 40% off of your order and join the over 3 million customers who are satisfied with the product. I really cannot recommend their product enough. I love it, and I think that someone special in your life, if they're looking for a new streamlined approach on organizing their cards, keys, and cash, should look into Ridge. I'll remind you one last time, 40% off if you head over to ridge.com forward slash a trippy farmer. There's really no better time to go check it out than right now. It definitely rained a little bit. There's water coming off of my roof. Don't know where else that would have came from other than the sky. Jeff found some more oil well pipes with the field cultivator this spring when he was working ground. Need to get them off of the trailer because we got to bring our spray tires home from the John Deere dealership. How many pounds should we do, Jeff? I don't know. What's it say? <laughs> they take quite a bit. Load range. Here, can you read that. Better eyes. Is that 60? Yeah. No, that may be flat, Jeff. There's nothing on there. Yeah. When I start it, I'm going to walk away. <laughs> Wrap this up in the field cultivator? Up, I did. Oh man. It was all thin around. I thought I'd gotten them all and I went back to work where he picked up. And I, I got to the end, I looked. I mean, it went clear all around. It was the longest one. It was almost two sections because they were like those that were yeah. jointed together. Huh. How'd you get it out? He got it out. 
you have to use the saw? No. Yeah, he did cut it. That's right. Huh. Low tire on the scrap trailer is aired up. I say it time and time again, these Milwaukee air inflators are just so convenient for stuff like that. The next thing I'll be spraying is post-emerge corn herbicide, which will require going down the road, meaning I probably want to get these big old floaters off and move on to the skinny row crop tires so I don't run over any corn. We may get the tires at some point today from the dealership. For now though, we're gonna focus on getting that little patch spray. Here we've got seven and a half ounces of Zidua SC. Probably more than we need, but I may have a little too much water in the tank, so. The Zidua SC has no burn down capabilities, it's just a residual. We are gonna throw in a little bit of glyphosate to round it out. That way we can get some non-selective control of any weeds out there, other than ones that are already resistant to glyphosate. Use about three and a quarter ounces of Zidua an acre. Roundup's a much higher use rate. We'll probably use every bit of a quarter of a gallon. Where do you fill your fresh water? I just saw it, it's on the side there. I guess. I don't know. I've never used it. Solution tank has water in it. Rinse tank's full. I even cleaned up my fresh water hand rinse tank. I'm going to fire up the sprayer. Then we're going to run the agitator. Mix that up a little bit. I went back and looked. It wasn't running. I wonder if I have to turn on the main pump. It does not appear to be agitating at all. Okay, it's definitely agitating, but I'm not going to show you guys because it's spitting out the top. If I'm understanding correctly based on what I just saw, the agitation draws its pressure from the actual main solution pump. So I have to turn the main pump on manual, build up pressure, then turn on agitation to get mixing. Obviously that mixing is probably coming up from the bottom. If there was a good amount of liquid in the container or the tank, it wouldn't be coming out the top, but we're so low that it's kind of probably breaking through with the pressure. No big deal. We're going to go to the field. The lower you have in the tank, the more sloshing it's going to do on the way, especially if you just kind of give her a few rocks. Oh yeah, perfect solution now. We're going to go spray this. It's lining up to be a beautiful day here in Mattoon. Highs are going to touch near 70 degrees. It's going to be a little bit of a breeze. Good thing we don't have any spraying to do other than this little piece. Right now we're coming in from the opposite side of one of our 34 acre fields. that has a little one acre piece on the back. The reason being is that our crossing to get to the back little sliver of our farm is so minuscule that it's hard for us to even really get back there on our main entrance. The neighbors, whether they know it or not, are gracious enough to let us use their little waterway that gives us access to this piece. The only thing that benefits from us farming back here is really the deer, because I'm sure they're the only ones reaping what we sow. We do come back here and harvest. I just don't think that it's a net positive for us. What do you say, everyone? Probably a 60 foot boom job, right? 120 foot, I'd be scraping the trees all the way down and then some. Go to the attachment settings on our sprayer. Once that loads, maybe I didn't click it right. There we go. Go to fold extensions, pull that over. And now when I operate the unfold after I get my power line approval, only 60 foot will come out. It's like a little magic trick. On top of the 60 foot, it automatically turns off my two outside sections. That's why they're red down here on my manual control. I'm gonna prime our boom, pop her in manual, bump that up a little bit. I guess gotta turn the switch on. Now we can pop it up. This pass will be every bit of one 60 foot boom width and maybe 10% of another pass. That's what we got section control for. Roundup should clean up all of this grass. Usually takes about five or six days if it's decently warm outside to metabolize in those plants and kill them. Should give us good coverage. Like I said earlier, if we had water hemp out there, I'd be a little more concerned because glyphosate doesn't even phase water hemp. Doesn't seem like there's much of that. I made it down and back and I ran out right at the end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run my rinse tank through the boom, clean it out as I spray out the last bit. 
not that concerned about perfection in this op operation. The good thing is that it takes very little Roundup to kill grass. I mean, you could practically sneeze a little drop of Roundup on there and that grass would not make it. It's one of the only things that's still phenomenal at taking care of. I noticed that little guy on the ground. A shot of Roundup and a kick from the floater tires didn't seem to wake him up, so I'd say he's a goner. Not my problem. I am done spraying the first time again on soybeans. I'll probably go grab the planter and bite my tongue as I drag the markers through the trees here to plant this. backed out of the way here slightly unfolded in what I'm calling the service position it's not overdue for grease by any means I've taken good care of it or at least I think I have we're gonna have a little bit of a slow schedule for the next couple of days so I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out while I can the nice thing about all the chemistries we put in the tank up to this point is that none of them can hurt corn sprayed over the top so we really don't have to worry about cleansing everything out hello dog hey young pup here comes old pump, limping around. Be nice to her. Hey, Chas. Katie's fully taken the new dog under her wings. She lives out here at the farm, and she's named her Maisie. Like, maize corn, because she was found out in the field running around. So, there's two dogs out here now. They've got this collar on her to kind of keep her close to the house, just so, so one, she doesn't run out on the road and get hit by the people driving 80 mile an hour, and two, stay away from some of the farm equipment. Took a little break, grabbed a quick launch, and have been running around doing a few errands. While I was doing so, I got a call from a neighbor and friend that they were having some steering issues with their red tractor. The catch is, is that they run deer steering, so it's not the red equipment given issues, it is the deer receiver or the display, they think. Fortunately for them, we're done planning for now. They are using a Starfire 6000 with an RTK radio on it, and we just so happen to have a tractor sitting in the barn with that same exact setup, and we'd be more than happy to let them borrow it. The neighbors are none other than the Uphoffs. I always razz them about their red equipment all the time, but it's John Deere that's letting them down, allegedly. They may not be wise enough to run green equipment, but they do have green hardware, so I can't knock them too much. They don't even actually know if it's the receiver that's bad. They're just gonna try ours out. If the 6000 with RTK doesn't work, it's not like we don't have a ton of other 6000s without RTK they can try. I think they just like to have the RTK in the corn planter and I can't say that I blame them. Once I head back out to the fields to spray again post-emergence, I'm gonna throw this RTK dome on the sprayer. That way I have repeatability in my lines and hopefully I run over less crops. I hate to say there's ever a convenient place to break down. They're running just a mile to two miles north of my dad's house. Stan's out here planting beans. Bill's coming from the north somewhere or the east. I really don't know. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this dome in Stan's pickup truck. Looks kind of familiar to me and we're gonna throw it in. Leave it right there so they don't miss it. Oh, would you look at that? Some Midland radio users, gotta appreciate that. The real best part about loaning someone your $10,000 GPS receiver is that you have the right to be a little bit nosy. That's what I'm doing. And as a neighbor, I really feel obligated to keep an eye on everyone. A lot of neighbors up this way planting. It all looks real nice. There's definitely a lot of blue clouds in the sky that definitely have some moisture in them. I'm gonna go ahead and grease the Hagee. I'm killing a little bit of time before I go plant that one acre field just to make sure the Roundup's nice and dried up. Don't wanna knock that off of those weeds before they uptake it and hopefully terminate themselves. Time for the most fun job on the farm, greasing equipment. It's kinda like the apple a day keeps the doctor away. A few tubes of grease keeps the John Deere mechanic away. Just got the Hagee greased up, and I will say that I did a better job than I did the first time. Not like there's a ton of acres on here. I found something though. Initially, I thought all I had to do was grease the cylinders on each wheel, the suspension. I realized that there was grease residue up higher. I could not find Zerks. And then today, looking around in the sunlight, I realized that there's a grease bank on every single one. There's four on each wheel, and they're all underneath, which actually makes your job a lot easier. So I've officially greased this thing thoroughly. 
Also got the boom as well. It's just not as exciting. I'm not sure if you could tell by how severely I'm dragging my feet to get the planter out and go plant this little patch. I'm really not too excited to do it. It's even more fun backing out of here with that four wheel drive tractor to the south. You either hit the half million dollar tractor or our very valuable green bin. It's kind of a lose lose. For a professional operator like myself though, you're not gonna hit either of them. The real trick is if you hit something, you wanna make sure it's total. We don't want any patched together Frankenstein repair jobs. We'd like to start from scratch. See you in about 20 minutes, Haggy. We got one more loose end to tie up. At least we don't have to travel far. This farm's maybe three miles to the east of our main area. Okay, one pass and we should be out of here. Unless a tree falls on us. Wish me and the planter luck. We're gonna do some tree scaping. There's our main entrance. It's not in great shape. At least the deer will have some to eat. Okay, field's finished up. It was a whopping acre and change. I didn't really have any opportunity to shut the blower fan off to keep the units clean because who knows what we're going to be planting next. I'm sure we will have to replant something. It's just a matter of what. Usually we do with either a shorter season bean or possibly a different herbicide technology than what I have in the tank right now. So we are going to initiate our runoff procedure. A planter, target population, 250,000, speed, 10 mile an hour, start. There they go. I think if I'm fast enough, I can actually watch. This process definitely confuses the automatic vacuum system because they're putting enough pressure out right now to almost pick the planter up off the ground. Okay, we're showing red. We got a big old pile of red beans on the ground. Time to take her in. I wish I would have realized I had that super convenient feature of the first two thirds of the planting season because that's easier than dragging the planter through the field trying to get rid of extra beans out of the units. Pretty easy. Time filled up, take her back home. Hard day of work really here. With the trees on both sides of this narrow passage along with all of the deer feeding, I really doubt these beans make anything over 40. He's heading on west and I'm pulling into the farm, so I'll just ease off and let him get a little bit of a lead there. That tractor's probably topped out at 25 mile an hour, so I've got every bit of 33 mile an hour on these wheels. Okay, planter's back in the shed. I pretty much used all my motivation to go plant that measly little field, so I'm not gonna grease it. They'll rest up for a little while while we wait and see how our crops emerge that have been planted up until this point. I'm optimistic that we won't need to replant anything, though there's always some gremlins that need repaired. Take it easy, planters. We'll be back in you in no time. Just when I was about to sit down and do nothing, Dad showed up with more work. My work. Spray her row crop tires. I figured we wouldn't get him for a while. definitely reaching the end of the line for this video not gonna say it was an easy day because dad and I did a lot of off-camera work like picking up a bunch of rocks not super exciting stuff though it is important for helping maintain the quality and reliability of our harvesting equipment about five or six months from now those drapers sure do not like to cut through rocks much like I don't like to eat bricks kind of makes sense I talk about this every year it's a very hard adjustment once you finish up planting your first round especially when you have a lot of neighbors still hitting the ground at a hundred percent speed taking your foot off of that gas pedal is very challenging to do obviously there are things in our lives that take priority over farming like family and other aspects however when it comes to what our main priority is from sunup to sundown during planting and harvesting season farming is the end-all be-all we organize and plan our schedule based on what we're going to be able to plant spray work everything involved with spring. Knowing that I'm about to leave work at 4.30 on a Friday, I didn't even know it was Friday until I looked at my phone. I actually 
couldn't have told you what day it was any day this week is a strange feeling, especially knowing that all these farmers are still going so hard at it. Do have some good news on that topic. Bill Uphoff figured out his GPS thing. It had nothing to do with needing a different receiver on it, so taking it up there was a waste other than just giving him a backup. He had to do some calibrations on his steering system. Either way, I'm going to do my best to try and relax and take it easy while I watch other farmers get after it through a window. Oh well, I'm shutting the doors up and headed home. As always, I greatly appreciate every single one of you continuing to tune in and support the channel. Your viewership means the world to me. I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day everyone, peace.